Hello students. Today we are going to start with the topic values and data types in Java. Java we have already done in class 8. I hope you still remember the two chapters which were there in the textbook of class 8. In any case, Java is one of the mostly used programming languages. Like any other language, it uses certain characters to construct sentences or statements. So in this topic, we are going to start with the character set. A character set defines the list of characters that can be used in Java. It is comprised of alphabets, numerics and special characters. Now there are two standard character sets which are available for us. The first one is called SKY character set. It stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. It is a 7 bit of codes that allows 128 different characters. The second character set is called Unicode character set. It is an international character set designed to represent all the characters found in almost all the languages all around the world. It uses 8 to 32 bits to represent characters. The first 128 characters are very same as SKY character set. So that means Unicode character set is a bigger set because it itself contains SKY character set. The next topic is escape sequences. It is a set of characters that has a special meaning to the Java compiler. In an escape sequence, a character is preceded by a backslash. An escape sequence causes the character following it to escape its normal working. Now you must be thinking what does that mean? For that let us take an example. For example, if we want to print a character N on the output screen, it displays the character as it is. But when it is printed along with a backslash, that means instead of printing N, we are going to try printing backslash N then we are going to see that it is not going to do its normal working. That means character N will not be displayed as it is. Instead, a new line will be inserted on the output screen. That is why backslash N is actually an escape sequence because it has escaped its normal working. Now there are some commonly used escape sequences which are given in this particular slide. If you see the first one, backslash t, it is used to insert a tabular space in the text. Tabular space is equivalent to four spaces on the screen. Backslash b is used to insert a backspace. Backslash n, we have already seen in the previous example, it is going to insert a new line. Similarly, there are other escape sequences which are given in this picture. You can go through them and you need to remember the functioning of these escape sequences. Let us take one more example to understand this escape sequence in a better way. For this, I have included this a small program, a Java program in which I'm going to make use of backslash T and backslash N as escape sequences. I've taken a class escape sequences. In its body, we have public static void main and within the main method, if you see, I have included three print ln statement. In the first print ln statement, I'm trying to display a message within double quotes, which is first line backslash n second line. Now, if you see the output screen, which is given adjacent to this program, you will find that because of this print statement, the message has been broken. We have first line, then we have an, an empty line in between a blank line. And then we have a, the message second line. So that means backslash n has inserted a new line in it. See the second print ln statement in the program, which is within double quotes uh, displaying a slash t, b slash t, c. So backslash t is actually going to insert tabular space in between the three letters of alphabet. So if you see on the output screen, we have a, b, c, and all these three letters of alphabet have tabular space in between them. Similarly, the third print ln statement is also doing the same. Hence, if we can relate the output screen with the program, uh, we can say that the escape sequences used here, backslash t and backslash n, are not doing their normal working, but instead they are doing something else. So whenever a character is preceded by a backslash, then it is 
the representation of escape sequence and there are certain predefined escape sequences which are there in the java library now we move on to the next thing whenever we are going to create a java program there are certain terms that we have to understand the first term is token so uh, let us talk about it a token is the smallest element of a program that is meaningful to, to the compiler that means the smallest meaningful element within a java program is called a token tokens supported in java include keywords variables constants special characters operations etc so in other words we can say the prime examples of tokens within a java program can be keywords identifiers literals punctuators punctuators are also called separators and we have another uh, example that is operators so let us talk about uh, these tokens one by one the first one we are going to discuss is a keyword keywords in java are the reserved words that are used for some internal process or they represent some predefined action these words are therefore not allowed to use as a variable name that means the identifiers or even the objects if we try to do this if we uh, try to use keywords as identifiers then what will happen this will result into a compile time error that means there will be a syntax error in the program why so because keywords like i said are reserved words they have their own specific task and we cannot use them for any other purpose if we try to do so obviously there will be a syntax error in the program certain examples of keywords are class public static void int char etc let us move on to the next topic that is identifiers which happens to be the next token that we are going to discuss now identifiers are used to name the different components within a java program it can be variable it can be the name of the method it can be the name of the class etc now unlike literals they are not the things they are not the values themselves they are just a way of referring to the value that means identifiers are actually the named memory locations within the computer system the locations where the values will be stored those locations have to be given some name so that is what identifiers represent now there are certain rules for naming identifiers in java like when we talk about english language with english language we do talk about grammar now what is this grammar grammar is actually the set of rules which is going to help us to create sentences proper sentences in english similarly with any given programming language we talk about a term syntax syntax is a set of rules which governs the formation of statements within a programming language so similarly in, if we talk about identifiers in java in order to name them we have to follow certain rules so there are certain rules for declaring identifiers we need to follow these rules otherwise we will get a compile time error which is also called as syntax error okay so let us talk about the rules one by one rule number 1 a valid identifier has characters upper case a to z lower case a to z or even numbers 0 to 9 only two special characters are allowed a dollar sign and an underscore remember no other special characters will be allowed while naming an identifier let us take an example we have at the rate symbol subject 1 now it is not a valid identifier the reason being it contains at the rate symbol i have already told you except dollar sign and underscore sign there is no other special character which is allowed for naming the identifier that's why this example in this example the identifier name is wrong let's talk about rule number 2 we cannot declare a variable with space space is also a special character so like i said no other special character will be allowed while naming the identifier only dollar sign and underscore is allowed so that's why in this example subject space 1 is also an invalid identifier it is not allowed the space is not allowed within the name rule number 3 says we cannot start an identifier with a digit or a number that means in the beginning of the name we cannot have a digit for example one subject it is not a valid identifier remember the digit can be used anywhere in between the name even towards the end but not in the beginning 
we cannot have space though like it was there in the previous example it was subject space one but if it could have been subject one altogether then it was a proper identifier it was a valid identifier but we cannot have a digit in the beginning so rule number three says that we cannot start any identifier name with a digit rule number four is quite understandable we have talked about keywords just now so they are saying keywords cannot be used as identifiers obviously keywords are reserved words they have their own specific task so they cannot be used for any other purpose so keywords are not allowed in identifiers example int float is equal to 5 float being a keyword cannot be used here as identifier so this statement is not a valid statement we cannot make use of keyword for naming identifier now let us talk about the next token which is called literal literals are sequence of characters that represent values within a program and are stored within a variable now literals are like contents for variables which act like containers for them literals are commonly known as constants let us take an example int x is equal to 5 here int is a data type which we are going to discuss on a uh, at a later stage here x is the variable and 5 is the value stored in it so x is behaving like a container 5 which is a value is actually the content stored in the variable so 5 is actually a literal here in this example moving ahead we are going to talk about various types of literals in this topic now if you see this diagram we have the bifurcation of literals into four categories the first one is a numeric literal then we have non numeric literal we have boolean we have null literal numeric literal is further classified into integer and real non numeric literal is further classified into character and string let us talk about these types in detail now so we are going to start with the first category of literals which is called numeric literals now these are values that contain digits from 0 to 9 it may contain a decimal point it can have a positive or a negative sign this is how the numerical literals go they are of two types now the first category is integer literal so the first category of numerical literals is integer integer values represent whole numbers only which can be either positive or negative but it cannot contain any fractional value remember so the, for example we can have 100 plus 56 minus 5 etc we need to note that the spaces are not allowed while writing integers the decimal point are not allowed even comma is not allowed while writing integer values so you need to take care of it while giving the integer values the second category of numeric literal is real literal now they are also called floating point literals as they represent values with a decimal point they can be written either in fractional or exponential form now this is important now what is this fractional form all, all about and what is this exponential form so let us take uh, the examples for the fractional form first so 12.31 minus 7.5 etc is a representation in fractional form that means we will have a decimal point we need to note that number must have a decimal point in the fractional form and has to have at least one digit before and after the decimal point otherwise it is invalid Two or more decimal points are not allowed in a given real literal, which is fractional form. Even comma is not allowed. Let us talk about the exponential form now. 1.02e23 is the exponential form. Here, 1.02, which is the, the component which is before e, is called mantissa. And the numbers which is after e, that is 23 is called exponent here e is actually replacing the base 10 that is 1.02 e23 is actually 1.02 into 10 to the power 23 so you can see 1.02 here is mantissa and the power 23 is the exponent 10 is the base which has been replaced by e now we have to note that number must have e in it if we are talking about exponential form of real literal it has to have at least one digit after e and that digit has to be an integer value it cannot be a fractional value the exponential form of a lit real literal must have at least one digit before the decimal point if it is there and the comma is again not allowed so this is how the real literal goes 
Now we are going to go to the next category of literals that is non numeric literals. Now obviously non numeric literals are the values that are not numeric. So again the classification is into two categories. The first one is called character literal. These values represent exactly one character within single quotes. Example within single quote D, within single quote at the rate symbol, within single quote 5 etc. String literals is the second category of non numeric literals. Now these values represent one or more characters but within double quotes. Character literal within single quote and string literals within double quotes. Example within double quote D, within double quote 1, 2, 3 at the rate symbol 56 etc can be taken as examples of string literals. So the difference is that the character literal has to have only a single character that too within single quote. Whereas string literals can have one character or more than one characters but it has to be within the double quotes. So you have to remember the difference between character and string literal under the known numeric literals. The third category of literal is Boolean literal. The logical values true and false which can be either yes or no are the actual Boolean values or the Boolean literals. The fourth category is null literal. Now it is a literal representing null or an empty value that is no object value is present in it. What are we actually trying to do? Instead of representing a value with a number or a string, a null actually represent nothing. That means nothing is there. So this is a special type of literal which is provided by Java. Now this uh, brings us to the end of the module and uh, I hope you have uh, understood all the topics I have covered in this module and uh, you can go through it at least twice or thrice and once you are done with it there is a short assignment which is being shown on this slide where you have to answer the given questions neatly in an interleaf notebook yes you have to make a fair notebook this time and you need to start with this chapter remember the topic of the chapter is values and data types so the first five questions that are to be there in the fair notebook are given on this slide question number one what are escape sequences in Java? Give three examples. I hope you have understood what escape sequence is. You can always take the help of the explanation part given in this particular tutorial. And then question number two, define the following terms with two examples. That means for each definition, you have to give two examples. So we have token, keyword, identifier, and literal. Question number three, distinguish between single quote A and within double quote A. I hope you are getting what this question is all about. You have to differentiate between these two representations. Question number four is you need to state the rules for naming and identifier in Java, which we have clearly discussed in this tutorial. And the last but not the least question number five is why cannot we use a keyword as an identifier? Think about it and try to write this answer in your own words. In the next module, I am surely going to talk about the answers of these questions. But I want you to go through the complete uh, teaching material that I have created for you, this uh, complete tutorial, and then answer these questions properly. So till we come up with the next module and uh, we talk about the next half of the chapter, complete your work neatly in the FAIR notebook, take care of yourself, and stay safe. Thank you, students.